Hi, I'm Jess Itali Lincoln, educator and designer for Vintage. I'm super excited about this new die set we have with Sizzix. We came up with bezel framelits, and these are dies that are meant to go with our Vintage Natural Brass bezels. They cut the exact interior shape of our bezels, so we have three different sets, cut circles, squares, and an eclectic set that cuts different shapes. You can create beautiful mixed media jewelry, memory jewelry, and a whole bunch of different projects using these dies. This is one of the most exciting things that I love designing with right now. I'm going to show you how to create this super simple necklace with one of our circle bezel framelits and this bezel here. So what you're going to do to start with is use a paper towel with a very small amount of hand sanitizer on it. I'm just prepping the bezel, so just cleaning the metal a little bit and from any oils that may have gotten on it from your hands, just so once you run that art foil, the sticky back adheres really nice to the interior. So now that I have that nice and clean, can get started. I'm going to set that down and what we're going to do is start with the machine. So what I have is the Vintage Big Kick and I'm starting with my platform and solo shim. And to cut these framelits out you're going to need a solo thin die adapter. So this piece slides right on top of that solo platform and solo shim. Just add that little bit. And you could also use a magnetic platform for this purpose. With the solo thin die adapter, what you would do is the next set your one clear cutting pad. And what I'm going to do is use our new art foil. This is the copper art foil by Ranger. And this is a six by six sheet. It has a sticky back. And I'm going to cut the shape out on this. So what I'm going to do is slide that onto the machine. And now with your bezel framelit, you're going to see one side that has a raised edge. So just feel it with your finger. That's the side that's going to go face down on the copper side of your sheet. The back side here has little number printed. This indicates the item number of the vintage bezel that it fits inside. So I'm going to go ahead and place this somewhat near the corner because what I could do is fill up this whole sheet and cut different shapes out then. And we're going to go ahead and place our second clear cutting pad. And then I'm going to run this all through. So I'm going to hold on to the top of the machine and just crank it through one time. It's very easy to run through. Now I'm going to remove the framelit and my foil from the cutting pad. I'm set that aside here. So now I have the cutout which fits this exact interior of the circle. What I want to do next is add an embossed pattern with one of our deco embossed dies. For embossing you're going to remove the solo thin die adapter from the machine. For the deco embossed dies, you only need the platform and your solo shim. So I'm using the Celtic Weave deco embossed die, and what you're going to look for is the back side that says place this side down, and that's going to ind indicate the raised side of the die so your image pushes up and embosses. So in order to do that, you're going to take the art foil, the white side is what you want to place down on that raised side of the die to emboss. and there's all different areas here that I can emboss, but I'm going to do this, this center really beautiful Celtic weave design. So I'm going to line this up, try to center it here, and then I'm going to gently close the die in the machine and hold on to that. We got one of our clear cutting pads down. I'll go ahead and add the second one. And this is just simply going to run through one time. Okay, so now here's my foil. You see the back side of it. And in order to remove this, sometimes it, it can be removed pretty easily, but other times with certain dies, you might have to just flex the folder slightly to lift it up, and then you just go ahead and peel that away. And then you have that really beautiful embossed pattern on the foil. To accentuate this design, I'm just going to use some of our Onyx Patina. And this patina we developed with Ranger. It's an opaque ink that adheres to metal on all different types of surfaces. And what you're going to do is shake the bottle until you hear that mixing ball. Get the patina ready. And then you're going to just add a very small amount onto your nonstick craft sheet surface. So like a pea size amount or so. And this is quick drying. So you always want a paper towel on hand and some water to clean your brush off with. And I have a flat tip paintbrush and I'm just going to 
get some patina on my brush here and work in very small sections because I want to wipe this away and see most of the copper design. So I'm just applying this to a small section and then using the paper towel and wiping it away. So it just accentuates the impressions in there. So I'm gonna go here and do this another section. And with this technique where you wipe it away, sometimes if there's an area that you can't remove it from because it's so fast drying, if you reapply a small amount of patina to that section, it kind of reactivates it and gets it wet again where you could then wipe and get some of that away that was maybe stuck in the background. So I like that here. It just really accentuates the design. I'm going to put my brush in water to clean it. And then now I'm just going to simply insert this into the bezel. So to remove this white backing, the easiest way to do it is actually taking your finger, like your thumb, and just rolling it until you feel that paper backing coming off. And then you can use your fingernail to remove it slightly. If you're having trouble, you could always use like a metal awl or a toothpick, but the easiest is just rolling it with your finger. And now I'm going to just line my design up with the top loop of the bezel and simply place this in so the sticky back is sticking to the inside of the bezel. And then for a simple design, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave this in here as is. I'm going to use my nail and finger and kind of just smooth it out. Just really stick it down nice. And then you have a beautiful raised embossed pendant. And you can wear it as is, just like that. Another option to take your piece just a step further is to do some melt art in the bezel. So this will kind of add like a faux enameled or resin type look to it. It's not necessary, but it's just another option. And this is a fun technique. So what I do is set my melting pot here to the UD setting and it's very hot, this interior of this pot. So you're gonna place this craft sheet, this is a craft project sheet, it's that same non-stick surface that we're using um, when we do patinas. This works nice with doing small pieces in the melting pot. And I'm gonna grab my bezel here with the chain nose pliers just to set it inside about the center. And I do have the lid of the melting pot on the back. This is balancing this pot out so the UD doesn't pour you know, over my bezel. And I'm going to take a small amount of the clear UD, which is an ultra thick embossing enamel, and I'm going to gently pour it to the center of the bezel. And once this starts melting, it's going to melt to the edges, and then I can go back and add any that didn't get all the way to the edges of the bezel. Just kind of pour it to the center there. I'm going to allow that to start to melt. And this does take a few minutes to melt, but the really neat thing about this technique is, unlike other traditional resins that have to cure for hours or for a day, this here is gonna cure, you can see it's melting very fast, but it's gonna cure just in about a minute or so, and you could literally assemble your necklace and wear it within minutes. I really like that it's super fast and very durable, and it leaves, gives you a really neat technique or look you know, over your piece. Just a different look. When we left it plain, you just saw that embossed raised area and this um, gives just a different look to it. Okay, so you saw I added just a little bit more to melt on along the edges where I noticed that some was missing. So in a few seconds here, once this all melts, what I'm gonna do is grab these tabs. This is to remove this piece from the melting pot. So I'm gently going to grab these tabs and try to balance it and bring it over alongside the melting pot here. And I'm going to use a metal awl, you could use pliers or whatever, a toothpick, just to slide it off to the side to dry. I just want to get it off the back just in case any UD got on the back of that craft sheet and then it won't stick to the back of my bezel. I let this cool for just a minute minute or two and it's already cool to the touch and this is cured and hard. It's an amazing product because like I said it's instant gratification. Now I have this and I can continue with my design. So this is the option where you can leave it glossy. You can see that it has kind of like a resin look. Um, the UD dries a little bit of an antique look to it which I love so it's not a crystal clear resin. Over time it might age and look a little bit more antiqued which is 
goes so well with the vintage findings. So what I love to do is turn this matte. So this is another very cool option. You can use an ultra fine steel wool. This is the finest steel wool. And what you're gonna do is just use a circular motion over that UD and it's gonna take that glossy and just turn this whole entire piece matte. So I'm just buffing it away, buffing the gloss right away and this matte look then makes this look even more ancient and old. And this is just my absolute favorite technique with this. This look is so beautiful. So you can see here that I just buffed all of that glossy away and that's matte. So that design looks like it's really inset deep inside the bezel. Let's say you do this and you don't like it. The neat thing is, is you just pop it right back into the melting pot and it could go back to glossy. So those are your options for this simple bezel necklace.